What does Aftonbuilt hide from the player off camera? Aftonbuilt is a free roaming Five Nights at Freddy's fan game that leads us into the dark trenches of Mr. Can Do's garbage disposal, a massive junkyard with a nightmarish guard dog. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at this abandoned scrapyard and the many things it hides from the player out of sight. Like, did you know there's a second animatronic hidden here? What about another version of this map that is nearly four times as big? Or, quite honestly, one of the most absurd things I think I've found yet, and it's hidden deep beneath this junkyard in the off-limits sewer area. There is a lot more than that too. So I hope you enjoy this behind-the-scenes look of Afton Built. Looking at games behind the scenes is entertaining and informative, much like this in-class session of today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, the tactical RPG with over 700 unique champions filled with PvE and PvP content. And kicking off this class is the undead champion, Professor Death Knight. Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena, the new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so's going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get Live Arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. All right, class. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, do you know Sans? Uh... The guy with the jokes? Loves hot dogs? Does anyone else have any questions? No? Great. All right, moving on. In other news, new players in Raid can use promo code JTSKIN before October 7th to get a new skin for Stagnite, designed by Epic Gamer JonTron. There's also a free legendary champion, Sun Wukong, based on the Monkey King from Chinese mythology. Just log in on seven days between now and October 23rd, and he's yours. And last, if you haven't played Raid yet and joined the fray, use my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get some great bonuses, including the epic champion Drake. And a huge thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video and supporting my YouTube channel. Class dismissed. As usual, I'll do a quick recap, so we're all refreshed on what we'll be covering. So the game starts us off in a large warehouse known as the home base. This is a tutorial area where we're meant to learn the game's core mechanics before proceeding on to the actual game. We turn the power on, and William Afton begins speaking to us through the AR pad. We then learn how to use the various tools that will be needed to scrap our animatronic foes, including stun bombs and the scooper. After disabling the tamper locks on this Freddy dummy, we're thrown into the game itself. In order to complete this level, we must find our way into the flow control room and grab a pair of bolt cutters, close each of the flooding valves in the trenches, and then complete a list of objectives pertaining to Junkyard Foxy. These include flashing them with a floodlight, hitting them with a scooper, and then ultimately disabling their tamper locks. Throughout this whole ordeal, Foxy is also patrolling this abandoned scrapyard with the sole intention of stopping you in your tracks. After each of these objectives is complete, we can then cut Bonnie free from the vines ensnaring them and overcharge them with our AR pad, bringing the demo to an end. So with the recap out of the way, let's turn the lights on and check out that menu screen. First, we can take a look at this entire truck interior from a different angle. It's a bit claustrophobic in here, and this horrifying spring trap on the wall certainly doesn't help. Something you can't typically see because of the camera's position is that the suit's ears are actually stored beneath this table. They're floating just above the ground, and they even glow when the mouse is hovering over the play button. We can see the exterior of this truck as it floats in this endless void. There's also a strange default textured sphere just off to the side as well. Moving on to the loading screen, I wanted to see how this driving effect was pulled off. So if we move the camera outside of the cab, we'll find that there's no ground beneath our truck. There is, however, a single telephone pole out here, and when the loading screen plays out, this telephone pole will be moved past the truck before instantly warping back to its starting position. This will loop infinitely until the game loads in, creating the illusion of motion while a vehicle is in fact completely still. Next, let's take a closer look at this tutorial area. So even though we never leave this main factory area during this tutorial, there is a lot more to this map than you'd first expect. There are multiple buildings within this small wooded area, but they are all completely empty inside. Beyond these buildings, there is also a large river extending across most of this grassy plain. The water is a strange reddish brown color though. Not exactly my idea of refreshing. Back inside this factory, we can take a look at these animatronics in the hallway where we'll find that they are not as withered as they may appear. 
We can see Chica's T-posing body clipping inside of this wooden pallet, as well as the entirety of Freddy's body underneath this map. In this garage area, we can find another Freddy T-posing inside of this box, similar to Chica. That's it for this tutorial map, but before moving on, I want to see what happens when we activate the scooper in slow motion. So, when we activate the stun bomb, we can see that it actually duplicates itself and flies off screen super fast. The scooper animation also plays out way faster than I expected, as it only lasts about 2 seconds when viewed in bullet time. I almost feel bad using this beast of a machine on Foxy now. This thing is dangerous, man. Upon arriving at our destination, I immediately want to take a closer look at this rustic, decaying Foxy. With the lights on, we can see a lot more detail in this creepy animatronics design. And man, I think I need a tetanus shot just looking at him. From head to tail, he is covered in rust and jagged edges. We can also watch him attack the player from another perspective. And in doing so, we'll find that he simply bites the air next to the player. We'll also see that when Foxy kills the player, we just kind of fall over dead. There is no dedicated jump scare animation. He just continues to chomp at the air in front of us. Just beneath this map, we can also find another copy of Foxy perpetually walking in place. Right next to him, there's also a copy of Bonnie just kind of sitting here. Off to the side, we can also find a couple of Endos who have seen much better days. Their legs are completely disconnected from their bodies and placed beneath the map. And so are their eyeballs. So in various places within this map, we'll find an array of animatronic arms sticking out of these trash piles. When the player passes by them, they will reach outward, almost as if they're beckoning to you. Looking inside these piles though, we'll find that these hands aren't really attached to anything. Can someone please give Chica a hand? Next, I wanted to watch Foxy get hit by the scooper from another perspective. And as you can see, once it activates, the scooper will swing forward, and Foxy just kind of gets bonked in the head. They will briefly stand in shock before ultimately collapsing onto the ground. Now, while flying around this junkyard area, I found that there's a lot more to this map than you could typically see during gameplay. For starters, there's a large open area just beyond this stack of cars. There is a ton of grass just kind of floating over here, but there is no floor. This area is sort of visible during normal gameplay, but it's so dark that you can't really see much of anything. But while over here, I made a discovery that I definitely wasn't expecting. A new animatronic we're not supposed to encounter. Now, to my knowledge, this enemy who I believe is named Courage was supposed to be used in free play mode that never made it into this demo's release. Something that really surprised me was that this animatronic can actually be found during normal gameplay. You simply follow the fence to your right upon loading in, and you'll eventually come to this large steel gate. If you stand in the right position, you'll catch their line of sight, and then they'll attempt to reach you through said gate. I felt bad seeing them locked up though, so I deleted the gate and released them into the junkyard. Now I have two animatronics to deal with, which is, uh, fantastic. Courage is a lot faster than Foxy, it seems, and though they have no animations, they're still capable of damaging and killing the player. It's a bit unfair, though, because we're not able to fight back. We're only able to temporarily stun them. Stupid dog, you made me look bad. Now, we'll come back to Courage in just a bit, because there is still a lot to see within this map. So practically, half of this map is actually taken up by this quarry, and within this area, we can find some pretty interesting stuff. For starters, we can find a handful of these buttons used to activate the scoopers. Except, these have what look like shadowy hands sticking out of them. Moving the player down here, we are able to walk around, as it is solid ground, and we can even activate these buttons. I'm not sure they do anything though, as there are no scoopers to be seen. There are also these giant blocks of what look like compacted animatronics down here, just floating above the ground. But what's most interesting was yet another animatronic that can be found down here. Clipping into the ground, we'll see a horrifying spring trap laying sideways in an A-pose at the bottom of this quarry. They're infused with metal parts, but there is no outer casing to their animatronic suit. This model looks pretty terrifying up close, and definitely not something I'd want to run into in an abandoned junkyard. Now I can't be sure, but I believe this dude was meant to be used in the free play mode alongside Courage. You can actually see the both of them side by side in a screenshot on their Game Jolt page. Why this guy is down here though is a mystery. So after seeing the multitude of unused content within this map, I decided to take a peek through the game files where I found something kind of crazy. What I found was a map called Junkyard V2 Merged, and is a previously unseen version of this location. According to the developer, 
This map was originally supposed to include a variety of different areas that the player would have to traverse. These include the pit, the car graveyard, and the facility, all of which are accessible within this unused map. For starters, as we explore this map, we'll find that each of these sections is blocked off by a large purple barrier, preventing the player from progressing. The car graveyard is no longer blocked off by a gate, but instead is blocked by an invisible barrier with some flooding text reading, Area Not Available in Demo. At this point, I decided to turn the lights on once more, and we can see this barrier a bit easier this way. It's super tall, stretching way into the sky above this map. While I was over here, I also decided to check out the facility part of this level as well. It's a large rundown factory with a white platform in the center. There are a couple of trenches on either side as well, and a doorway leading to the back of this large building. In the back of the facility, over by the kitchen, there's a small staircase that we can walk down, and it leads us to this sewage disposal area. If we follow these tunnels, we'll find a room with a rather decrepit Freddy Fazbear, surrounded by some candles. Just to his left, there is a sewer pipe leaking into the room, as well as a small table and some more candles. There's also a piece of paper over here, and although it's a bit hard to read, we are able to make out a couple of sentences. Looking these phrases up reveals that the paper actually contains the Phone Guy transcript from the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. Knowing this kind of makes this whole area feel like a shrine of sorts, a tribute to what started this massive franchise. If we step into the room in the back though, things get kind of weird. We'll find a T-posing Freddy just kind of standing in the center of the room, and when you approach him, well, just take a look. I cannot hold it in anymore. I just want to... As you just saw, Freddy just sort of floats into the air and then explodes to the I cannot hold it anymore meme sound. This was definitely a surprising find and I have no idea why this was put here. So I'm just going to head back upstairs and pretend this never happened. If we leave through the back door, we'll find that it leads to this area overlooking the pit. As you can see, unlike the previous map, the entire quarry area is now shrouded in a dense white fog and it's definitely giving me the mist vibes. There is for sure something in the mist. I just hope it isn't Miss Carmody. Before heading into the pit though, I want to take a look at the car graveyard. Heading in through the entrance, the first thing you'll notice is a working scooper among these piles of cars. This entire area is a pretty sizable maze though, and it's super easy to get lost among its twists and turns. The first open area I found was occupied by this large crane with what looks like a magnet blocking our path. Albeit not very effectively, since we can just sort of walk around it. In the full game, we may have been able to operate this crane to move the magnet out of the way, but for now, it's completely static. I also found this creepy corridor that was full of these animatronic limbs. I'm talking nearly a dozen of them. It's super creepy. Also, Courage is still present within the car graveyard, only they're not on the ground anymore. Instead, they're placed on the catwalks that lead you through this rusty labyrinth. They still have functioning AI and will chase a player across these pathways relentlessly. They can, however, get stuck in these ramps pretty easily, which I found kind of funny. Before moving on, I wanted to see what would happen if we dropped Courage off of these walkways. So I deleted the floor beneath them where they began pursuing me through the maze. Although they have no animations, it's still pretty scary being chased through these narrow paths especially because the red arrow attached to the model becomes visible when they're right on your tail. I can only imagine how terrifying this would have been had it made the final cut in the demo. So at the end of this maze, we'll come to a large steel gate. If we head through this building, on the side though, we'll see that it brings us to a pathway leading into the pit. Following this path takes us down into the pit itself, where we come to yet another labyrinth. When I saw these chunks of condensed animatronics earlier, I really wasn't expecting them to be used this way. The entire maze is made up of these robot cubes, and I don't know how to feel about that. We can also find the buttons we came across earlier, only now it seems they're attached to these large metal pipes. Moving to the center of this maze, we'll find a large metal tower with flames shooting out of the top, and scattered around the base of this structure are a ton of robotic corpses, including Freddy, Fredbear, and some Endos. There are also these white arms, but I'm not entirely sure which animatronic they belong to. Within this area, we'll also find a large rectangular object that is completely covered in a white texture. The pipes that we see all throughout this area also seem to attach to this odd structure. This entire area is filled with piles of garbage and animatronic scraps, and it's made even creepier by this layer of fog covering the ground. With the post-processing effects turned back on, 
This area quickly becomes the scariest section in this game. It is honestly pretty chilling. So at the end of this maze, we'll find a hillside path similar to the way we came in. And it actually leads us up to a small building on this cliffside. Upon entering the building, it appears to be some sort of office building. There is a small set of lockers and a stairway that leads us upstairs to a room full of computers. We can step outside through this window though and drop down into this hole where we'll find a handful of these terminals in this small building overlooking the pit. Finally, taking a look at this map from an aerial view shows us just how big it really is. And we can really appreciate it a bit more from this perspective. But with that, that brings us to the end of our adventures in this nightmarish junkyard. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And once again, a big thank you to Raid for sponsoring. And you can click my link in the description to get some good rewards. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Cheers!